All right, good morning. Uh, we are down to the last set of questions for the mock test. Uh, I've gone through this much faster than I thought I would, so um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> we'll be able to, on Wednesday, go through more problems um, uh, of your choosing. So, so I'll go ahead and get started on this problem, and we'll just we'll end when we end. So question number 22 of the mock test. For the following questions, let f of x equal x plus 5 and g of x equal x divided by x minus 5. Show that f is 1 to 1. Oi, this was not a kind test. So showing 1 to 1 is, is not terribly difficult, but it requires that you remember these things. Like remember what, what, a, what is a 1 to 1 function? What is the definition of that? And it also requires that you then know how to like prove that thing. Um, so what is the definition of f uh, of 1 to 1? Um, okay, there's, there's like two ways to do this, I would say. The first is to say if you have two outputs that are the same. Okay, so if you have two different outputs that are the same, then x equals y. So if you have, notice how I wrote this, you plug in two different things, x and y, well then those two things must be the same. Okay. Is that, is that clear? Another way to say it is assume x is not equal to y, but you get diff you get the same output. Oops. Is that is that clear? Assume that you get different outputs for the same, or excuse me, the same you get, assume you get the same output for two different inputs. That would mean that we have a two to one function, right? Right, or any number to one. That's not, right, if we get a contradiction, then we know this can't be true, which means they must have been the same input. That's that's what we're gonna do. So let's let's pick two inputs. X. So this is f of x. We're gonna set this equal to what we get when we plug in something else. So we're gonna assume x is not equal to y. But we will assume that we get the same thing when we plug in x and when we plug in y. Okay. This is just like the graph of x squared. We plug in y, we plug in x, and for both of these, we get the same thing out. Okay, so x and y are not equal, but we get the same thing out. Okay, does this mean that x equals y? No, not in the x squared situation. Okay, y squared equal x squared. Does y equal x? No, y could either be plus or minus x. So we don't get a contradiction there. Um, but in this case we do. So if we assume that x plus 5 equals y plus 5, well, let's, let's simplify this down. We'll subtract 5 from both sides. And what do we get? We literally get x equals y. That can't be, because we assumed that they were different. OK, so just to reiterate this, this, this solution, suppose we have different inputs that give, which give, the same output. Okay? 
we solve. Uh, we sort of like we we reduced. This is a better way of saying it. Our equation, the equation that we got of from f of x equal to f of y. That's the two outputs. Okay. So that they give the same output means f of x equals f of y. And so that means the two outputs are the same. We reduced our equation f of x equals f of, f of y and we found that x equals y. So that means we didn't have different inputs. We had to have the same input. Okay. So that means two there's no two there's no two inputs which give us the same output, which means our function is one to one. Okay. I know that's a tricky question. I know for sure that's tricky. <laughs> that's the only thing that you're uh, that you're this is the hardest part I would say of this this problem that I've seen so far. B and C are not gonna be too bad. Okay. So here we go. Uh, B, find the function f times g and state its domain. All right, f times g, not so bad. Here we go, x plus five, that's f of x times g. g is x over x minus five. So this is, this is it. It's, it's x times x plus five over x minus five. Done, that's f times g of x. You take f and you multiply it by g. What's its domain? Well, there's no restriction on f. We can plug in any number and add five to it. Is there a restriction on g? Yes. It's every real number except five. Right, we cannot plug in five. So to find the domain of f times g, we take the intersection of those two. All real numbers, and all real numbers minus five. The intersection of these two is, in this case, the domain of G. It's all real numbers minus five. Another way to say it is um, the set of all X such that X does not equal five. Another way to say that in a real number line is here's five, an open circle there, everything else is shaded. Okay. Uh, another way of saying that is negative infinity to 5 together with 5 to infinity. Okay. So there's there's lots and lots of ways to show this. Part C. Find the function g over f of x and state its domain. So we're just taking g, x over x minus 5. We're dividing that by x plus 5. Okay. Well, x plus 5 is, is no different than x plus 5 divided by 1. Right. And so now we've got a division of fractions. But remember, nobody divides by fractions. Everybody multiplies by reciprocals of fractions. So we're going to take the denominator and multiply by its reciprocal. And we get, we get x over x minus 5 times x plus 5, which is x squared minus 25. That's it. That's g over f. State its domain. Oh, boy. So, uh, here we go. What can't we plug in? Well, first we're remembering that we're, we're dividing by f. Okay, so when we're dividing by f, we need to consider some problems. f is x plus 5. So if we plugged in negative 5 and divide by the function f, we're actually dividing by 0 because f of negative 5, f of negative 5 is 0.
So we can't we can't plug in negative five or f gives us zero in the denominator of this overall fraction. So that's we gotta cut that out of our domain. Also, g, we already saw up here, g can't take values of positive five. So we need to cut that as, out as well. Right, so g is this fraction. We can't plug in five in the denominator to that one. So we have to, we have to cut it out of the, of the domain as well. Okay, so when we cut out five and negative five from the domain, um, what we're left with is, is something similar to part B. So we've got in interval notation, negative infinity to, to five, uh, sorry, negative five, up to negative five to five, and then up to infinity. We just cut those out entirely. In set builder notation, it's the set of every x such that x is not equal to plus or minus five. Okay, so a couple different things there, a couple different ways to state it. You could graph it, just put holes at five and negative five. Okay. Um, let me really quickly um, clear the screen. So if you want to see what's here, pause it. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen now and I'm going to go down and see if there's a part D for 22. And there is. G is 1 to 1. Find the inverse function of G. Oh boy, our favorite. So what do we got here? We've got G is x over x minus 5 and we've got space. G of x equals x over x minus 5. Here we go. So we can think about this like we did in the lecture last time, or we can think about it uh, using the procedure that I gave. Um, we can think about this in terms of exactly what we do to x, but here it gets really confusing because there's multiple things we do. We take x, we divide it by 5 less than x. <laughs> so I would just go with the procedure. So the procedure says to replace g of x with y and try and solve this for x. So multiply both sides by x minus 5. Okay. So the first thing again is replace g with y. The second step is solve for x. So now let's multiply through. It's yx minus 5y is x. And then we will, uh, let's subtract the yx over. So it's minus 5y equals x minus yx. We're close. We'll factor out an x on the left side. Negative 5y equals x times 1 minus y. Okay. Then we divide by 1 minus y. Negative 5y over 1 minus y is x. Then what do we do? <laughs> then what we need to do is we need to switch. So this is all step two. This is step one of the procedure. Step three is switch the x and the y's. So every x becomes a y and every y becomes an x. Interchange them. So y, which is now our inverse function with regards to x, is negative 5x over 1 minus x. Step 3 is accomplished. We found our inverse function. And I'm just going to quickly pause the video here, pause the recording, and make sure I got this right. And then I'll be right back to close it up. Okay, it looks like I got it right. So we've found our inverse function. We followed that basic procedure of replace your g of x, the function name, with the list of inputs with just the variable y. Second, solve for x. Third, interchange the x's and y's, and you've got yourself the inverse function. Now what you can go back and do, which is what I did, is if you compose f of x with f inverse, 
if you get X, you're good, right? So you can, you should be able to do it in both directions. If you compose in both directions and you get X back out, you've got yourself the inverse. So that's it. I think that's actually the last problem as well from the mock test. So with that, uh, keep in mind that the class test is this 18th and 19th of March. Um, happy belated Pi Day yesterday, everybody. It was March 14th. I will see you Wednesday for more problems. If you have any questions in office hours, come bring them and come to office hours. But I'll see you in person on class, in class, in person, in class on Wednesday. Okay? Until then, I'll see you later.